to be a theatre designer, for me, is the ultimate collaborative art form because you're working with writers, you're working with directors, sometimes with dancers, with puppeteers, and you all come together and you all contribute, and, and that's fascinating. I think it affords you an opportunity to explore your own creativity, um, but to do it in a very particular framework, so uh, you always have a project brief within which to work, and those confines and constraints can actually lead to really sort of creative, inventive solutions for things. It affords you the opportunity to bring lots of different interests into an artistic project, so social interests, political interests, historical influences as well, and, and this play demonstrates that very well. I think it's really important when you're starting out on your path in life and wondering what you want to do, to try and work out what, 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 you re what you're really passionate about what you enjoy doing and try and develop that into a career and do something that feeds your soul and not just your purse. Given the restrictions for designing a show like this, I think from restrictions, and that's the joy of being a designer, uh, from those restrictions you can actually come up with really creative solu solutions all your spaces, all of your gestures, all your, of your bits of creativity, anything you put on stage has to work really hard and has to justify itself to the nth degree. So you can never create a real environment like a televisual version of the world, but what you can do is create a suggestion of that world. So you have enough elements that suggest um, a sense of time and a sense of place and you do that through textures and colours and carefully chosen objects. So in terms of the textures and materials that I chose to use in this set, all of this, for the model I have used card and plastic and spray paint, but for the actual set, that's being realised in aluminium and timber. It's, it's being built with a timber frame and some metalwork, and then it's all being clad in a very thin layer of brushed aluminium. The perspex has been used for the windows, and then this square of grey flooring has been created using a product called Dance Floor, so-called because it's used in a lot of dance venues, but it's essentially like a, a big piece of lino that can be acquired, that you can buy in a whole different series of colours and that can get rolled out and taped down very quickly in every venue. The stools have also been specially made with, uh, in steel and aluminium because they're climbed on and sat on quite a lot. Uh, and used in various different inventive ways throughout the show, they needed to be specially made so that they were strong and stable. What we started to explore was um, to, I wanted to use chalk. These chalk marks that are here delineating the, the route that the Freedom Riders took from Washington DC down to New Orleans is created and drawn on the board during the show. The chalk line that appears on the, the screens throughout the, the at particular points in the play uh, demonstrates the journey but it is also something that can be erased and changed. There was something quite poignant about that and quite sort of visually strong that you can start with the hope of a journey and a journey very clearly defined but the movement of feet and the movement of protest can erase that journey and it then has to be redrawn and begun again. They are uh, defined by logistics, quite simply. We wanted something that was quite anonymous, that was modern and quite anonymous because of the whole setup of the play within the play. So that you have modern actors that come into a school or a venue to put on a play and to tell a story about this particular political movement, 
but we also know that they are modern actors and they bicker and squabble and fall out during the course of the, of the play in their modern characters and then relay the story in their period characters and their modern characters. So you need to choose clothing that is neutral, but also does give small gestures of explanation towards who those people are. So you can have, in CJ, you have a character who's a little bit more flashy and narcissistic, and so his choice is, of clothing is subtly different to the other, the two older actors who are sort of the maternal and paternal figures within the cast. And also then to Daze, who is the younger member of the cast, and we've, I've chosen to put her in a dress that's quite reminiscent of a, of a younger girl. You need um, visual archetypes and little icons, little visual icons that give you very quickly a sense of that person that can be put on very quickly and are, and are archetypes or icons of a particular type of person in society.